so we are uh, going to our next topic uh, as you know already uh, from this course outline which is visible on your screens uh, we have already completed the first bullet uh, which is actually the uh, introduction to probability and some uh, terms like random process, statistical average, correlation. And um, we, are, we are moving towards the second bullet now. Uh, so we will start digital modulation techniques. And if you see, uh, the first uh, topic here is signal space analysis. So uh, today uh, I would explain the concept of signal space. Uh, so I move to uh, the final slide. This is actually our target. If you observe uh, this figure, uh, the signal space is shown in the figure where you can see uh, three axes and a vector which is drawn uh, in three-dimensional space. Well, uh, mm, this will be our final uh, slide for today, but I am just showing it to you, which is uh, which we have to understand that uh, we have a vector, and um, if you see, it's written clearly written that uh, the vector represents this uh, signal. It's a signal vector, uh, bold S sub M, S of S sub M, uh, and you can see three axes, which are uh, horizontal axes, which is psi 1 of t, the vertical axis is psi 2 of t and the third uh, axis is psi 3 of t. And uh, we would, uh, uh, I will explain it, I will come to this slide later on. So uh, be before uh, going to three dimensional signal space, let me review uh, a vector, uh, the concepts of vector space which you already know and then we will uh, learn whatever you don't know. So uh, I start from uh, the base, uh, very basics, which is actually the uh, vector space. And uh, all of you are uh, familiar with the uh, vector space. Uh, actually, this is from your previous knowledge. And uh, instead of uh, starting from the uh, three-dimensional space, let me draw a two-dimensional uh, plane. If you observe a two-dimensional plane. So we have uh, the x-axis and y-axis. We are familiar with this axis from our uh, elementary classes. Um, and you know that uh, we have uh, i unit vector in horizontal direction. And uh, we draw it, uh, we say it's a unit vector i. And we draw it like this. Similarly, uh, we have another unit vector, which is J unit vector. It is in the vertical direction. And we can uh, easily draw our unit vector J, uh, which, is, uh, which is this one. So we have a unit vector I and a unit vector J. And these vectors uh, uh, have the length, uh, length of the vector, uh, as you are familiar, that the length or the magnitude of these unit vectors uh, is 1. So if I say the magnitude of i, uh, it is the same as the magnitude of j, uh, which is equal to 1. So the length of the unit vector is 1. Now, uh, what's the benefit of these axes? Uh, the benefit is we can draw any vector, for example, vector a, if I draw vector A, so I can draw any vector in this two-dimensional plane. Uh, and I can represent this uh, vector A, uh, vector A as a linear combination of these unit vectors. So I can, I can say that, okay, my unit vector A, my unit vector A has two rectangular components, this one along x-axis and along y-axis. And if I represent uh, these as ax and a y uh, vectors, vector ax and vector a y, vector a y. Uh, now, 
using these rectangular components I can represent vector A as a linear combination of these unit vectors AX times unit vector I and AY times unit vector J and what is this AX and AY AX if you see this AX and AY actually uh, these the AX and AY scale the length of this uh, vector for example AX scale the length of unit vector I so the unit vector has length 1 as I mentioned but when we say AX time A sub X time I A sub X time I so this vector has a length which is mentioned here similarly unit vector J has a length 1 uh, 1 unit but when we say AX time J, it is a vector which has this length. And uh, these are the rectangular components of our vector A. We can represent our vector A uh, as a linear combination of these I and J unit vectors. Well, uh, these I and J uh, unit vectors have certain properties which are important. And... Um, one of the property uh, is uh, uh, the dot product. If we see the dot product of unit vector i with a unit with unit vector i is the same as j dot j, and this is one. See, but uh, if we see the dot product of unit vector i with j dot product of i i dot j it is same as j dot i and this is one right so these uh, uh, this is sorry this one is this is not one uh, this one the last one is zero this is zero so if we have uh, the same unit vector their dot product is one if we have two different unit vectors uh, i dot j is i dot j their uh, product or their dot product is their dot product is this is this is product right this is not uh, minus this is product so their dot product is zero very important property and uh, uh, if you later on uh, actually concentrate here on these properties because uh, in the later section of uh, uh, today's lecture later part of today's lecture i would show you that these are the this actually gives you the fundamentals of detection theory so uh, we will see this that later on uh, but uh, let's observe uh, one more property here uh, if uh, if I if I find the dot product uh, let me let me show you another uh, important property which is usually used uh, which will be uh, used in the detection theory actually the fundamentals of detection theory uh, if you multiply the vector a with vector i if you try to find out the dot product of vector a and i what actually you get uh, you have a x unit vector i a y unit vector j and its dot product with unit vector i so as you know i dot i would give you uh, one and i dot j would give you zero so here we are left with only ax it's the keep in mind what is this ax this is the uh, scaling factor this is the scaling factor uh, here this is actually the uh, uh, the uh, the scalar which uh, which is multiplied with the unit vector i or uh, I should say this is the image of vector a uh, this is the image this is the image image of uh, this is the uh, actually the image of vector a uh, over over x-axis or horizontal axis over x-axis right is the image of uh, vector a over 
x axis or uh, the image of vector a over x axis or in the uh, ith direction or in the direction of the ith unit vector uh, similarly if you find the uh, dot product if you uh, try to find out the dot product of uh, uh, a with the j uh, such as uh, if i say a dot j then the result would be uh, this is ax i a y j dot j and the result is a y so if i find the dot product of a vector uh, the dot product of a vector with j th unit vector i would uh, the the resultant is a coefficient a coefficient which uh, acts as a scaling factor of uh, as a scaling factor of unit vector j and it represent the image this ay this ay uh, represents represents this represents image image of a image of a uh, in jth direction in the direction of jth unit vector in jth direction okay so the image of a in the uh, direction of unit vector j uh, very important property later on you will see that uh, we would re we will represent our signals in the signal space the vector a uh our our signal would be like uh, vector a and uh, when we try to find out uh, we have other i uh, for i and j unit vectors we have actually signals uh, orthogonal signals uh, and uh, we would see that if we want to try, uh, if we want to find out the image of a signal uh, in some uh, over over another signal we would use this dot product property uh, now let me uh, uh, recall uh, le let me view this figure uh, once again uh, now we have to extend this concept to the three dimensional uh, vector space and then the three dimensional signal space but in two dimension you can see that uh, i unit vector and j unit vector are perpendicular to each other so they are in a perpendicular uh, they are perpendicular to each other that is why their dot product is uh, the i dot j is zero so the if the unit vectors are perpendicular their dot product would be zero um, if you re uh, extend this concept to the three dimensional vector space uh, you would have another unit vector k uh, which is perpendicular to these two uh, i and j unit vectors uh, i cannot draw it uh, uh, on this uh, screen but uh, you can uh, you have the knowledge of this uh, uh, vector space from your previous classes and uh, I can show it to you uh, in my slide or the lecture notes if you see the three-dimensional vector space and uh, now here we I have just summarized these concepts which I just explained you should go through this text as well uh, now in three dimension in three dimension you can see uh, here is the XYZ plane uh, in x y z plane uh, we have three unit vectors um, uh, you can see the uh, the vector b which is in three dimensional vector uh, space and the vector b has three components as uh, shown in this uh, first line uh, the di the three dimensional vector b which is equal to uh, b sub x unit vector i plus b sub y unit vector j plus b sub z unit vector k so this is the uh, you have three components of vector b along uh, i -th, uh, direction j -th direction k -th direction or you can say vector b has image over x axis y axis and z axis and uh, in equation 3.4 uh, it is shown that if you try to find out if you are interested actually what what uh, equation 3.4 shows that if you are interested in uh, in the image of b 
uh, along x axis just uh, find the dot product of b with unit vector i and if you are interested in the image of uh, vector b uh, along y axis find out the dot product of b with j b dot j and you will get uh, b sub i and uh, similarly if you are interested in the uh, image of b along uh, z direction uh, find the dot product of b with the k unit vector and you would find that image right so this bx by and bz as shown in equation 3.4 uh, it we can find uh, by using the dot product property uh, we will extend this concept to the signal space now uh, well uh, for vectors uh, if you see uh, l let me read this text here because uh, uh, so that we do not miss anything uh, so what's written in the last e after equation 3.4 if you see similar uh, analogy can be used for signals if we define psi 1 of t uh, which is similar to unit vector i psi 2 of t similar to unit vector j and uh, psi 3 of t similar to unit vector k uh, their dot product uh, their dot product equals uh, 0 so if we have uh, now we have to define the dot product in case of signals here we see that the dot product of unit vector i j and k i dot j j dot k k dot i is 0 so if we have three signals uh, psi 1 of t psi 2 of t psi 3 of t and we say that these three signals are orthogonal as we have the i and j orthogonal vectors orthogonal vectors or perpendicular vectors so, so similar uh, similar uh, uh, statement or similar uh, discussion is valid for uh, in case of signals but we have to define these signals that uh, how what what would be uh, orthogonal signals uh, uh, which we represent usually by psi 1 of t, psi 2 of t and psi 3 of t. Uh, <laughs> let me clarify uh, one thing, the signal, if we have such signal, suppose we have already defined these psi 1 of t, psi 2 of t, psi 3 of t, uh, 3 of t, three signals which are orthogonal, just like similar to i, j, k, then we can write uh, a signal as a linear combination of these three psi 1 of t, psi 2 of t, psi 3 of t as shown uh, in this slide, s of t which is a signal, it can be written as a linear combination of uh, psi 1 of t, psi 1 of t is scaled by s1, uh, s1, s sub 1, psi sub 1 of t uh, as uh, shown in this figure, s of t is equal to s1 psi 1 of t plus s2 psi 2 of t plus s3 psi 3 of t, right? So this is actually the linear combination uh, of uh, these orthogonal signals and uh, if we have such signals psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 of t uh, which are orthogonal, uh, very similar to i, j, k unit vectors then uh, it means we can uh, have such a, a space uh, which is shown here in this diagram. We can represent uh, this kind of three dimensional space. Uh, by these three signals psi 1 of t, psi 2 of t, psi 3 of t and any vector or any point, any vector uh, in this three dimensional space would represent uh, a signal as shown in this figure. Uh, there are this three dimensional uh, signal space uh, where the three axes are psi 1 of t, psi 2 of t and psi 3 of t. Now a very important uh, here to note uh, is that we need to define psi 1 of t, psi 2 of t, psi 3 of t and these three should be orthogonal, right? These three should be orthogonal. Then we can uh, use these three uh, signals uh, as orthogonal axis. We can represent these three signals by these three orthogonal uh, vectors. Now another property in the, uh, well, uh, uh, if you uh, come to your two dimensional uh, signal plane, we have just uh, a unit vector i and unit vector j along x and y axis uh, and uh, with the help of these i and j we can uh, uh, we can 
write any vector a in this two dimensional plane as a linear combination of i and j. So if we have 